Brandon, welcome to the show, man. Oh, thanks, brother. I appreciate you having me. And uh, I'm just excited to be here today, have a conversation with you. Yeah, there is so much to talk about. It's kind of like where to even begin. So let me just start with this. What are you up to now? What can you share about what you're up to now, where your time is being spent? Because uh, you've done a lot of work in the last like number of years. What are you doing now, Brandon? Yeah, so I'm actually working on my second startup now. Uh, it's it's kind of marrying uh, what I've done in the past. So I started uh, years back, a little over six years ago, the first Black-owned crowdfunding platform in the U.S. And uh, after that, went on to go ahead and co-found OV, Overlook Ventures, with um, my amazing partner, Janine. And um, during this last, as the kind of market shifted, um, I decided that, hey, I actually see a real opportunity to marry my experiences with what I did with InVentureFi and uh, the crowdfunding platform and OV and the venture capital ecosystem. And uh, I, I felt like I was the only person in the world to kind of bring this to life with, with that experiences and my life experiences as well. So that's where I'm spending the vast majority of my time, also doing a little angel investing and, um, and then fully supporting you know Janine and everything that she's doing with OV right now, um, because that's kind of like where my heart is. And so it's just all about serving founders in the ecosystem. All right, I'm glad you mentioned all of those things because I want to ask. I wanted to ask about this too. So I'm curious with you, what you just mentioned. So all the things that you have, both experience and like this community you've built, and I want to dive into that as well. Just take me through that decision, like how you think about what's the most impactful thing for you to do. Because there's a lot of people that always are like, we see this issue. We see, for instance, an article recently uh, in TechCrunch about Black founders getting like. Yeah, like basically half a percent, like 0.43%. I think they updated it to 0.43 from 0.12, but it's still ridiculously low in Q3. And people see that and it's always like, well, what can I do? Like, how do we change this? How did you think through that in terms of you mentioning, okay, this is my skill set, my experience, I should start something new. Just how do you think through that? I'm curious. Yeah, so um, it's really interesting. I, I don't know if there's a lot of people that have the same life experience and the same professional experiences as I've had the privilege to have in, in my life. And so I feel with that experience coming from a very underserved community, coming from a, a very um, low income background, but then being able to, you know, claw my way through <laughs> uh, this, <laughs> this venture capital ecosystem, this startup ecosystem and, and the lessons I've learned. I almost feel a responsibility to share that with the world so that people don't have to go through a lot of the same stuff I went through. And so when I see those stats, the 0.12%, the updated 0.43%, you know, um, I, I, I use that as motivation and validation to say like, hey, you have a responsibility to share your experiences and, and what I see as a gift to the world. So it's always been for me, how can I best serve others and, and how can I best serve the, the e economy and ecosystem? And I think what's really important about that from a, from a societal standpoint and from a civilizational standpoint, really, too, we have we, we've not been the best that we can be because the capital and the venture capital ecosystem has been so it's been in one space. Right. And I just keep saying, what happens when we expand that? The people that are going to solve the problems are the people that experience them. So the problems we're experiencing today, they can be solved, but it can't be solved by think tanks and these group things and everybody that's outside of the actual problem. And so um, to me, it's just, I know that I have the, the somewhat of the answer and it would be selfish of me to, to go and and not put in the time, energy, and effort to solve the problem. I'm excited when you finally launch this to talk more about what you're doing. And we'll get to that later. So uh, maybe in part two, a second interview. But for one of the things that this, this thread I see and what you've done and kind of following along, at least in the last like year or two, and seeing your career as well, is, is this heavy focus on community. And I'm curious, with Overlook Ventures, when you started that with Janine, how did you think about building community, building on what you already had built in terms of the community even before then? 
And how do you approach that in the world of, of venture? Because it's all relationships, finding founders, co-investors, all of that. Just how do you even think about community within everything you were doing overlooked as well when you started it? It's all, it's all, um, it's all kind of, so let me step back. I grew up in a community that, you know, my mom, my dad passed at a very young age. I had an older sister. And um, so I was home alone. We were home alone a lot, my sister and I. But my neighbors would come and check up on us. They would, um, hey, we got dinner for you guys today. Either come over or we're going to bring you dinner or whatever. And they would come and just late night, make sure we were getting in bed, brushing our teeth, that kind of stuff. Um, and then there were also times they would check me, right? So I'd be out there running with um, running with some, some uh, people that I thought were friends in a bad crowd, whatever. And I'd get spanked by my neighbor. Like that stuff happened very often. And so I always grew up and with a community oriented thing. And, and I take that same approach to today um, when we started OV and what I'm starting now and, and just how I live my life. It's a community approach. I have friends that, you know, run other VC funds or, or founders and they'll check me. And the same way I was getting spanked before as a young kid, they'll shoot me a text or something. Be like, hey, I don't think this is the best move. I don't think this is the best thing. They'll check me. Um, but then I also have people that will, you know, metaphorically, they'll bring that food to me. They'll say, hey, I want to make an introduction to you to this person and whatever. And so I take those experiences from childhood in that community experience and just bring it into um, today and how, how I operate with just my life, really. With that in the early days, how were you looking at, okay, so you didn't have experience starting a, a venture fund, run, running a venture fund. And the thing I love about your, your journey, which I think is going to be really relevant, is like other people who also see the terrible numbers in venture capital, black founders getting funding, women founders getting funding, they're going to be like, I want to start a fund as well. And you're going to see this over and over again. And we've seen some examples in the past, more recently, uh, like Matt Conwell sends out, sends out to me is his amazing story as well. Anything on like the beginning, starting that, how did you even begin thinking of like, okay, maybe I should talk to mentors. How do we begin starting, you know, launching a fund? Tell me, tell me those early, early days of OV, because I think it's gonna be helpful for others who want to maybe start a fund to kind of help change this entire industry. Yeah, I think it's just talk to everyone, have a conversation with everyone, reach out to anyone that you can reach out to DM anybody that you can reach out to. So like, you know, for example, one of the people, um, Jason Calacanis, he, uh, he runs the All In Pod and has launch and whatever. I literally shot dude a DM one day. I was like, Jason, man, I kind of like what you're doing. Can you, you know, can we have a conversation? He shot me some stuff back. Sometimes we'll DM back and he'll send me some stuff. Sometime I'll send him some stuff sometime and he'll answer. And that's just a really cool relationship from shooting your shot. Sometimes I send him an email and he doesn't respond. It is what it is, right? Mac. I hit up Mac one day, Mac Conwell, from an intro that a, another brother out in Baltimore had, had sent to me. And uh, he was like, hey, I think you should talk to this dude, Mac, randomly. I shot Mac a text message. Next thing, me and Mac are like close friends. I, I was just texting with him right before this, hitting him up, telling him I was going to be doing this. And he was like, that's awesome, you know, <laughs> go ahead and do the thing. And so it's just like just talk with everybody that's what i think is is the key and you'll start to put things together like um this person i can hit up for x y and z intros whatever this person i can hit up for that but then always be open to doing the same for them what i think is really interesting about this ecosystem you see these people you almost idolize these people before you're in it but then once you get in it, you realize they want your help just as much as you want theirs. And it becomes this beautiful, um, this beautiful mesh of just everybody helping each other. But it starts with you putting yourself out there and just being involved. And so talk to everybody that you can and um, obviously prioritize your, your energy, your time, energy and your efforts. But at the beginning, you really just have to talk to everybody you can. <laughs> yes, there's so many different players in the industry and ecosystem, like on many different sides, LPs, GPs, co-investors, co angel investors, obviously the core founders. There's so many things that you, you have to go through with that. What role did audio, in terms of like audio rooms, clubhouse, Twitter spaces, big on that? What, take me through your thinking on that because you mentioned, can I obviously be very aware of your time, especially raising a fund and then investing as you're, like, it's like, it's insanity. <laughs> where, where did that fit into everything in terms of doing that? 
Yeah, that was really cool. So I was I was lucky to be one of um, the very early users of Clubhouse. I have no idea. I can't even remember. Somebody just hit me up was like, <laughs> are you on Clubhouse? Because I was loud on Twitter. And um, they were like, I was like, no, I'm not. So they shot me an invite. So I was one of the really earliest users. And it was crazy being in rooms with like MC Hammer, Felicia Horowitz, <laughs> Terry Crews, right? And it's like, what in the world? I'm sitting here talking to these people. I was almost starstruck at first. But then what I realized is I was just using my voice. I was being so loud. And so uh, I believed in my mission enough that I would just talk about it, right? And because of that, these people would start reaching out to me. They'd be like, hey, what's going on? They'd follow me. And then that increased my um, social capital that I could use. And that's really what started my Twitter following growing. Then I ended up in um, the Twitter Spaces creator program or something like that. They were paying me to use Twitter Spaces, paying me to talk. That's <laughs> insanity, right? That's like, that's this insanity. But it was just, <laughs> yeah, this is great. But it was like, it was only because... I was vocal about how I feel. And if any of you follow me on Twitter, I'm, you know, just me and you follow each other. Like, it's like, I'm very vocal about what's going on. And I think that that's necessary. And it may not always, I'll be the first to say it, may not always come across the right way. Um, but I think that that's okay. There's a vulnerability there that people love, especially in audio. Um, and it just makes a connection with people. Like when you're, let me make sure I'm sending this the perfect way. And then now with Twitter edits, you can edit tweets and stuff. And like within 30 minutes and it's like, you're being, you're trying to be this picture perfect thing, but with audio, you're just being you, you're just letting it out. And there's a vulnerability there that people love and connect with. And I think that's so important. Yeah. It is something where you're finding your own voice. It helps you to have that repetition. Like how do you get your message across? What's, how's it being received? from doing 400 plus podcasts at this point, I've, I've gotten, I like to think a little better in asking questions, but also like understanding the nuance of, of interviews and, and all of this as well. And, and that just helps you in that. And like, as a VC, as an investor, it's like, how are you going to meet co-investors? How are you going to meet founders? Where does that deal flow come from? And having some outlet like a Twitter spaces, for instance, is interesting. And we look at Twitter really closely at Vitalize obviously as well. I'm curious with, with Overlooked and going back to that, with working with Janine and thinking about when you were going to start this, your thesis clearly overlooked is <laughs> overlooked founders. But even with that, you could be generalist. You could have been specializing in some capacity. What were those conversations like around that and figuring out your thesis at Overlooked? Yeah, I think Janine and I just had really open conversations about where we felt we could add the most value. And like, I think that's a lot. It's really overused, but um, you just think like, for example, we invested in this one company that's an AI company. I can't add any value to an AI company. Like, it's just, right? <laughs> but if you look at it just as an AI company, I don't know anything about artificial intelligence, machine learning, et cetera. But what I can do is say, let me have a conversation with you. You know, this, this woman, Megan, she's amazing and she understands that. But getting herself out there talking with press and, and telling her story, she maybe d was not great at. And that's something I'm really good at. And that's something Janine is probably the literally, you know, people, if they don't know, she's probably the best marketing person that I've ever met in my entire life and, and had the pleasure to know. And uh, she really has helped Megan with that and telling the story. And so I think that there are certain things and, and I'm a great motivator as well. So like Megan will text me sometimes and be like, Hey, um, this is going on. I'm frustrated by this, whatever. And we'll just text back and forth, have a quick call back and forth, whatever. So I, I add a lot of value there. Janine was adding a lot of value with the marketing, et cetera. And it's just, okay, where can we add value? And a lot of these overlooked founders, these underestimated founders, whatever you want to call them, um, they need that motivation. They need that marketing help and stuff. And so, especially at the earliest stages. And so that's, it was always just about where can we best serve founders? Where can we best serve the ecosystem? And that's kind of what um, really, you know, allowed us to birth OV. And from that too, so others you know, who are starting venture funds, 
where were those deals coming from? And I'm sure it's all over the place, but I'm curious for you specifically, uh, were you seeing a lot of that come through Twitter then, Twitter then because you were so active on Twitter? You mentioned the mentors and there's these co-investors. Some people like to look at VC as being very competitive. Obviously it's competitive, but there's also a collaboration. Take me through how that was going for, for Overlook Ventures in terms of deal flow side of things and uh, what you were seeing. Yeah, so we, we made a really concerted effort from the beginning that we just wanted to um, take, we didn't want to take any warm intros. It was all going to come through this Airtable form. And so that was just us talking it on Twitter, being active voices, being um, out there in the ecosystem and, and people saying, wow, I really want to be a part of this and, and applying. Um, we did have a ton of people, co-investors sending us deals all the time uh and we would just always say you know uh like sorry we don't take warm interest please have them go through go through the form and um you know even though i'm not actively involved in in the day-to-day anymore right now because i'm 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 building the second startup i'm sure that you know jeanine is taking that same approach because she is just so passionate about really evolving this ecosystem i'll say and um that's just how it works anybody that wants to apply there's there's an air table form and and i'm starting to see what's really cool it's a lot of other funds um going that route i've had a ton of fund managers reach out to me say like hey how can we set up an air table form what should we be doing with this and, and it's so cool because that's that's the democratization of venture capital happening in real time we're living through it we're a part of it. All of us, you know, you here, you guys, everything you're doing, vitalize everything that we're doing. And, and, you know, it's, we're making the democratization of venture capital more than a buzzword, but a reality. It's interesting too. There's so many different angles to that. So you mentioned starting a company, you know, right now you're going through it, which I can only imagine <laughs> that again, how hard that is of start things before as well. But like, it's like, there's that side of it. Um, like the founder side, you're finding some way to build something in that capacity. There's venture capital as starting a venture firm. You have angel investors who are deciding with their own capital, but obviously you need capital for that. All these different ways to approach the issue that is like venture capital, you could say <laughs> basically right now. I'm curious with all the things I know we talked about a little bit earlier in terms of how you kind of viewed this, but with your mentors and what you have as your assets, like just take me more in depth on that, even looking at your new opportunities, where you're moving forward, how what you're doing now fits into the next decade of what you're doing and beyond. Just more in depth on that, because I find that the most one of the most fascinating things is like you meet all these ambitious driven people who are like, I have this motor, which direction do I point? And I always love hearing how people decide that. So I just want to go deeper on that and take me through like did you have discussions with mentors was it just like a couple weeks was it a couple months like just take me through that more in depth because i'm obsessed with that (laughs) yeah so i think it it is there's discussions but i first and foremost you have to have that belief in your head so like for myself i knew this even back in 2016 when i when i started my first startup i knew this is where i wanted to be and so this Mm -hmm. goes very similar to like with my first startup, but I did not have the the knowledge, the tools, the network, the capital to get there, to get where, where we're going now. Now I do. And so I think it was, a, it's a timing thing first and foremost, and you have to have a belief and say, I can do this now. Then you have those conversations with the mentors and the friends and, you know, the, the peers, et cetera. Because um, if you don't have that, everybody's going to tell you a reason why you shouldn't be doing it, right? There, everybody's going to tell you a reason. Some people will hype you up. Oh, yeah, that's great. That's great. Okay, <laughs> we'll write a check, you know. Or some people will hype you up. Okay, well, how can you help me? And they go silent. And, and majority of people are always going to tell you the reason why you shouldn't do something, um, even if they're mentors, friends, whatever. Take that all into consideration. But as long as you have that initial belief in, in yourself and what you want to do, um, then go for it. I mean, it, it, it's just it's literally that simple. We have power. We have belief. And when it's something so strong, like for me, of, of evolving venture capital, and why I think venture capital needs to evolve on such a level. It's not just, I want more black people to have money. I want more women to have money. It's not, it's way more than that. Um, 
when it's that powerful, like you'll hear a hundred reasons why you shouldn't do something and none of it will matter. You'll, you'll see the opportunity in each one of those no's or each one of those, I don't think you should do this. You'll see, okay, well, if I do it this way, actually you would say, yeah, that's a great idea. And you take each one of those into consideration. One thing too, from that, I'm curious about is so whether it be founders having difficult conversations with, with, with hiring, firing, et cetera, uh, obviously more so firing on that side of things, but whether it be that, whether it be someone deciding to make a change and to leave, feel, feel, feel free to share what you would like with this, but talking to Janine about doing a different direction, how do you handle difficult conversations? Because it's a part of life, obviously, but especially in business can be tricky. <laughs> I'm just curious on anything that may be helpful for you as you're thinking about a new path. Yeah, I, you know, if, if anybody's ever listened to me on any podcast, on any Twitter spaces, on any clubhouse, uh, on any phone call, one thing I always say is open, honest conversations. That's it. It's period. That's all. That solves like 99% of the problems that we face on a daily basis, whether it's with customers, investors, LPs, whether it's with family members, friends, whatever it may be, open, honest conversations. And I am like, <laughs> I do not hold back. <laughs> and very luckily, Janine is the same exact way. Janine does not hold back. And I think that that's why we've always gotten along so well and, and many others in the ecosystem. Um, you'll see a lot of fake stuff. So if I were to, if I were to um, compare it to anything that I think all of us could kind of like uh, say that we've seen, you see a lot of these threads on Twitter and it's like, oh, hey, 99% uh, of people use YouTube, but they don't use it the right way. and here's 20 different ways to use YouTube and here's the best YouTube videos. And if you enjoyed this thread, please follow me here. Please sign up for my sub stack or whatever. Please pay me thousand dollars, whatever crazy stuff. Like we see that a hundred times a day. That to me is not an open, honest conversation. But if you say, man, I, I was trying to use YouTube and I really found these two videos healthy and whatever. And they really helped me do X, Y, Z, get in shape, whatever it may be. I just want to share them with people and that's it. That's an open, honest conversation. Trying to make a thread just to get followers is not, and you have to sift through uh, the bullshit on that. But uh, if you can, if you, if you gain the ability, which you do over time to sift through that BS, um, it's a really powerful tool. So I just think open, honest conversations with everything. I love that. So simple. Uh, it's always one of those things with any of these like decisions that you're going through. It's like, better to have them early, as early as possible. Like it doesn't get any better as you wait. So whether it be firing someone, whether it be a new decision, new, new direction or whatever, like it never gets easier from just waiting. Like just have the conversation, which you just said and done, of course. I know we're almost out of time here. As you're building your next company, you've had a startup before, you bootstrap this, that startup. You obviously have connections in the industry now and you have the experience from before. How are you approaching building this company, things you're doing differently now as you have, you, you have much more experience and also connections. How are you thinking about building it differently now? I'm working with the people I want to work with and I'm taking capital from people I want to take capital from. And I'm, and I just have the experience now, right? I know the, the mistakes I made. I just know what I, I didn't know what I didn't know. And now I do know what I didn't know that first time. <laughs> And it's made it so much easier. Um, it's weird. And, and, you know, I almost feel like a, a Silicon Valley tech guy or something now because um, I'll have people that are hitting me up in the DMs. Hey, I heard you're working on something. I saw you're working on something. Can we write you a check? Can we angel <laughs> invest? Can we whatever? And in my first startup, I had no idea what venture capital was. I, I didn't even know what a startup was. And so like now it's just a completely different experience. So what I say to people is just keep at it. It's all, I think it, it really is just all about immersing yourself in everything in the ecosystem. And if we can immerse ourselves in the ecosystem, build relationships authentically, have open and honest conversations with each other and, um, and, and just like talk things out, work things out, et cetera. Then if you can survive that long enough, you'll be in that same position I'm in now where people are like, how, how can we, you know, be a part of what you're doing? And I just never thought, thought that was even possible. Um, but it is, and it's not just, 
that's why I think is like so different. A lot of these Silicon Valley, we always say, you know, white founders get funding or, or whatever the white male founders, whatever the things we say, they're just networked to the point that many of us aren't. And, and that's for, you know, a plethora of reasons, many of which are systematic and, and it's very difficult to break. And hint, hint, that's kind of what I'm working at on doing and helping. <laughs> Um, such but, a tease, but I such think, a tease, Brandon. Yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> got to throw it out there a little bit. But real, but really, uh, we can we can kind of do the same thing, and that's when we see venture capital change, and that's when we see the economy change on such a scale that it, it's it's almost going to be unimaginable right now. Um, but we will see it. I'm excited for the launch next year and what you're building. I think to your point, network is so important. Uh, the things is like you always think about stoicism. You can control what you can control. So if you don't have a network now, well, guess what? You can build it. So like, like it's like, obviously there's an issue and we're working on that. But at the same time, the woe is me doesn't necessarily help. Like go build it. Then we see Twitter, we see other things, but you can DM people. I think mean, other thing that I see from you in terms of like this perspective for what I have, it's like, show your work. Like you write on Medium, you have showcased things, you've showcased your knowledge on on Twitter spaces, on Clubhouse. Like that's why people now are interested in what you're doing and want to invest because you've put the work in and you've shown that work and then people can see that, oh, I'm interested. But if you've never done that, no one's going to be able to see that. Brandon, where's the best place for people to reach out to you if they would like to? Yeah, the best place is usually Twitter. Uh, so write in my DMs, uh, please feel free, follow me official B Brooks or hit me up on Twitter DMs. Um, also you can, I love taking emails and my email is brooks at zinsu.co, Z-I-N-S-U. So just throwing that out there for <laughs> anybody that would like to check out something new and, uh, yeah, just hit me up. I love having conversations. I love helping people. And then I love being helped. <laughs> this was a lot of fun. I'm sure we could talk for hours, uh, but we cannot today. I am looking forward to following along. Thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, brother. Enjoy the rest of your day. And uh, I appreciate you.